Dr. Ingrid Mira is a Harvard trained orthodontist and mission driven entrepreneurial leader passionate about democratizing access to confidence and entrepreneurial success for healthcare providers. In today's episode, let us chat with Dr. Ingrid Mira. This is the Guiding Voice podcast series. the guiding voice for a better future folks i am your host navin samala just a fellow it professional on a mission to shape the careers and lives of millions across the globe in every episode we interact with industry experts or thought leaders or academicians or coaches or young entrepreneurs like dr ingrid across the globe to drive some insightful conversations that will help each one of you learn amazing stuff also we share an interesting trivia or a fun fact towards the end and you know you will acquire more knowledge by tuning into the guiding voice for every minute than any other podcast in this space thank you so much for joining me today and today we are going to discuss entrepreneurial journey of dr ingrid and before that let me welcome dr ingrid hearty welcome to the guiding voice very very nice to have you part of the guiding voice journey in shaping the careers and lives of millions across the globe it's so nice to have you here Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be a part of this. Pleasure hosting you. And uh, Dr. Ingrid, probably we can start with the first question. Can you share with our audience about your journey in becoming orthodontist? Because uh, uh, typically we are aware of how someone becomes an orthodontist in India. But uh, since you are from the States, we would like to understand how that works and the kind of courses that you attended. etc so that our audience will get a better perspective of becoming an orthodontist yeah absolutely um so it's quite a journey in the, in the united states i know it's very different than europe i'm not sure how it works in india but basically what we do is you go through four years of high school and you go and then go through four years of college um in college you specialize in pre-dental which is the same as pre-medicine you then go through four years of dental school to learn how to become a dentist and apply to become an orthodontist And from there you go through 3 years of orthodontic residency. So in total after high school it's 11 years of higher education. Wow, 11 years of higher education after high school that's huge. Yeah. All right. So can you now talk about your entrepreneurship journey like how did you pivot into this entrepreneurship and probably share top 3 things that have helped in your professional journey so far? Um it all started back when I was in residency for becoming an orthodontist and I basically saw two major issues which were that mail order aligner companies had just launched and basically as I was learning orthodontics I realized that mail order aligner companies don't work and not only do they not work they're dangerous because moving your teeth is very much a medical procedure that moving your teeth can affect your jaw your bite it can even affect your headaches or TMJ and i was in a space with this conundrum where this all these marketing dollars that were being poured into our ecosystem so now it's crazy half the world wants a beautiful smile half the world wants to straighten their teeth so that was conundrum number 1 is realizing that the world was being lied to um, and at the same time orthodontists in the united states are the number one most in debt professional in the country and so we're network we've basically been faced with this massive supply demand issue where everything that people want the people who can give them what they want are too in debt to give them what they want And so that really started at the beginning of my journey where I didn't really know much about business at all. <laughs> and I learned. I basically spent the next now it's been 7 years of my life trying to figure out, okay, what does it mean to start a business? How do you start a big business? <laughs> all right, you got to raise money, you know. And I would say in terms of your question of like the three things that helped me the most. Um number 1, someone taught me this early in life, the best employee in the world is Google. Anything you want to know, thank God is on the internet. <laughs> you know, 30 years ago this wasn't the case, but literally everything you want to know is on the internet. That is number 1. Um number 2 is having the confidence to know that you can do it that you are the same, you are made of the same fabric as everyone else. I am made of the same fabric as Jeff Bezos and as Elon Musk. So that means I can do what they're doing. And having the confidence to know that you're made of the same fabric as other people is definitely number 2. Number 3 is not letting failure get in the way because failure happens every single day. Every single day good decisions are made and bad decisions are made. 
And just internalizing that failure is just or failure. It shouldn't even be called failure. It's just part of the process. You know, it's just, how do you, it's, it's just overcoming that. And like, if it hurts a little bit, if it costs money, if it means you have to fire someone, if it means that, you know, whatever happened, you have to switch technology. That's just part of the process. It's part of the process towards creating something massive is, is understanding that, oh, okay, that happened. It was a blip next. And so I would say those were definitely the three most important things that affected my journey. Mm-hmm. So you're made of the same fabric as Elon Musk. Yeah, I think that is, this is uh, a very profound insight and a uh, very different perspective altogether. Uh, that's a great thought. Now, uh, let's talk about your venture, Two Front, what it is all about. And before that, I'm very curious to understand why did you name it as Two Front? Any specific <laughs> reason? <laughs> You know, I thought it was a catchy name. You know, it's it's like my two front teeth. Um, and what we're building is the future of collaborative dentistry. And because of that, there's two fronts to collaborative dentistry. One is general dentists and one is orthodontists. So I thought it was a very relevant name in terms of collaborating in dental care. Great. And how did you come up with this idea? And uh, did you learn any hardest lessons in this journey? Yeah, um, I came up with the idea by iterating a lot of times, you know, at first we were going to start like a conglomerate of dental groups, we are just going to build clinics where we are going to staff top orthodontists, we are going to create a beautiful digital experience, a beautiful brand. And I realized that there's so much more opportunity than that, you know, that is less expensive, I can invest money in technology instead of brick and mortar infrastructure. And so that's how kind of how we came about, you know, it's, it's realizing that um, you know, lots of iterating on the business model. <laughs> and so we, it's, I think this is our third business model that's been live for 14 months now here in the United States. And we are just continuing to refine it every single day. Yeah, that's nice. I think um, the model is going to evolve as we iterate and all, right? I think that's a yeah. great example. Now, uh, let's talk about this TikTok teeth trends. <laughs> right. Uh, I, I was going through your profile and found this particular phrase very catchy. So can you explain to our audience what these uh, TikTok teeth trends are and how they can be dangerous? Oh, you know, there's always just different things that people are trying, like at home whitening with non whitening products, you know, like filing your teeth to try to make them straighter without people realizing that it's actually like enamel in your teeth doesn't grow back. It's not like cutting your hair, (laughs) you know? And so anything that involves your teeth, you want a professional to do it. You know, like if you cause, if you file your teeth too much with the nail file and you caught and you cause yourself sensitivity, you can't grow back that enamel, which means you've got to go up to your dentist and get a tooth cap. And so anything that involves your teeth, just don't do it with anyone besides a dental professional. Because people don't realize that teeth are living structures. Each tooth, each tooth in your mouth is alive. And you want to keep the tooth alive forever. <laughs> and so and so I just don't recommend it whatsoever. Yeah. So looks like people are getting influenced by some tips shared on TikTok and you wanted them not to do this, right? Exactly. <laughs> Great. And um, you guys have recently raised $5 million from the venture capitalists, right? Yeah, please share the fundraising journey and what kind of uh, questions were asked and how did you really approach that particular investors or the VC community? Yeah. So I think it goes back to like Google is your number one best friend. I had no idea how to do any of this. You know, I was practicing as an orthodontist in New York. And I basically Googled like how to meet investors. And so I started just Googling local health tech conferences and like meetups. And I just started going and I would just introduce myself, you know, people who are impressive, people who had done important things. And I just said, hey, like I have, I'm I'm starting a company, you know, I want to raise money. Here's, here's the problem and here's how we're going to solve it. That's all I knew. I knew there was a problem and then I knew there was going to solve it. Um, I Googled the, like, what do investors need to give you money? And basically it was two things. It was a fundraising deck, um, good vision. And then the third thing is a financial model. So I spent months iterating on a, on a, on a deck, you know, just iterating and iterating and iterating. I had never put together a deck in my life. So I just put so much like, you know, blood, sweat, and tears into this deck, um, which finally, you know, I ran it by all of my friends, you know, I was like, does this make sense? Does this make sense? And finally, after a couple of months, I started getting to a point where it made sense. 
Um, and then for building out a financial model, you know, I had never touched finance in my life. I hired a friend to help me build in a model of what I thought that this growth could look like so mm-hmm. that I could show it to investors, which, you know, it's all, it's all made up. <laughs> I was like, I think it's, I think it's going to cost me this much. I think that this is going to be the returns. I think this is how much, I think this, this is the team we're going to need. I had not a clue, but basically, you know, investors are just looking to see that you can actually put these things together. And they know that you don't know everything. They just want to know that you're going to figure it out. And I think that's what they saw in me is that, you know, I'm going to figure anything out. All right. Yeah, that's uh, quite an interesting journey. And uh, now can you share your advice? Okay. For those who are trying to raise this venture capital money or funding. Believe in yourself. Um, Don't let investors saying no to you get to you. Like, don't forget that Airbnb founder, Brian Chetsky, faced 250 no's before they got one yes. And now they're a $26 billion company. Um, So just believe in yourself endlessly. Believe in your vision and do whatever it takes. Don't let, don't get down on yourself and keep going no matter what. If you have an idea, it's a reason. There's a reason for it. If someone else has figured it out, it means you can figure it out. So just don't stop. Wonderful. I think that's a great advice. And uh, yeah, this has been fa- fabulous conversation, uh, Dr. Ingrid. Uh, now let us switch to a quick rapid fire round, wherein I'm going to ask you a few interesting questions and you can ask them very crisply. Okay, I would like to start uh, my own personal question, actually. What is the meaning of your name, Ingrid? Ingrid? Yeah. I don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have right. no idea. I, I wish I knew that. <laughs> Did someone ask you before? Or is no. <laughs> all, all right, no worries. Yeah. So in, in which subject were you worst at school? Like math and calc like calculus, chemistry. Oh god, I struggled so much. That's why you were on the life sciences side. <laughs> yeah. The stuff that I had to take my whole life, I sucked at. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh can you share your favorite book? I have so many, you know, it depends on the category. Um, I wish I had time to read now and I just, I haven't made time in like the past two years, but the most recent books that I read that I loved, you know, from a business perspective is zero to one, Peter Thiel, you know, he really just nails what it takes. Um, And then just an epic novel is Pachinko. Um, Pachinko is so beautiful and so well-written and, you know, captures this moment in history that is like, so quintessential for people to understand how a certain part of the world and peoples were affected. So love Pachinko. Interesting. Let me move on to my next one. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would that be? Yeah. Barring there are no visa constraints or anything, you literally have a choice to live anywhere. Where would you live? Oh, I love that question. Honestly, like I see myself having a home base somewhere, but then traveling my whole life. So that home base, like I'm so lucky, it's probably either Los Angeles where I live now Mm -hmm. or Mexico City. I love Mexico City so much. Mexico City is stunning. But then I want to travel once a month around the world. That's my goal. My goal is to just have my home base. But every single month, I'm jetting off to somewhere beautiful. Oh, All right. Quite interesting. And uh, yeah, when are you most productive? Like on a given working day, what is your most productive time? Mornings. Mornings, yeah. Same with me, like I'm super productive during the first two hours and which is kind of do not disturb mode and I complete yeah. the entire thing. <laughs> yeah, totally. All right. So last one for the rapid fire. What is one electronic gadget that you'd like to see or invent yourself? Oh, that's a hard one. You know, I just got the aura ring mm-hmm. and I love the aura ring. The aura ring gives you all this data on your sleep. I think that the next thing that I would love to have that I know is like in the works is a blood glucose monitor so mm-hmm. you can you can monitor the spikes in your glucose in your blood oh. mm-hmm. because i know that you know basically sugar is what affects longevity like a lot of spikes in sugar is what affects like the deterioration of your veins which affects you know getting heart attacks and like diabetes and all these other things in the long term so i would love to be able to monitor my blood glucose so i can live longer yeah quite interesting so you said it's already in the works right i believe so people okay. are trying to figure that out all right. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, this has been a fabulous rapid fire. And before I let you go, one final question for today's conversation, Dr. Ingrid. 
what will be your one piece of advice to those aspiring to make big in their careers or lives anything you can talk it's truly internal it's truly like believe in yourself and also have a predisposition for action um i think a lot of people spend a lot of time thinking i'm going to plan i'm going to use this period of my time of my life to plan so that i can be prepared to take action later and you can't ever plan you know you can't plan too much when as soon as you take action you're going to fail and that's the best way to learn the best way to learn is to fail and then keep going so just be action oriented simply amazing all right so thank you so much uh, dr ingrid for joining us this has been a fabulous and very crisp conversation and you have shared a lot of insights which will help our community uh, in terms of uh, getting into the entrepreneurship and also taking on bigger and bigger challenges and also your advice to those aspiring for the uh, venture capital funding is also invaluable thank you so much for being part of the guiding voice journey in shaping the lives and careers of millions across the globe thank you so much for having me this has been such a pleasure yep same here all right so that was a fabulous conversation and folks before we move into the trivia section here is a small request to you in case if you have loved this episode and the conversation just like i did and found it useful please share with at least three of your friends or colleagues who can benefit from the guiding voice so that your friends will learn new stuff like you and we'll gain a set of new subscribers also in case if you haven't subscribed to us please subscribe from the app where you have tuned in from so that you will be notified about all the future episodes thank you so much in advance now let's cruise into the previous segment of today's episode so today we had a wonderful conversation with dr ingrid mira who has ventured into entrepreneurship and was also able to successfully raise 5 million dollars as the from the venture capitalist so we would like to talk a bit about uh, entrepreneurship and which are the countries that are considered as a best place for entrepreneur you know according to the global entrepreneurship index the united states is the best place for entrepreneurs and the us ranks highest for entrepreneurs as well as those who are developing small business and in second place are the switzerland followed by canada the united kingdom and australia whereas at the bottom of the gdi list are bangladesh murindi Mauritius, mauritania and chad and you know the factors that get into this ranking or like the g the gedi considers the entrepreneurial abilities attitudes and aspiration of each country's local populace and this is then measured against the country's infrastructure when i say infrastructure in terms of uh, broadband internet facilities transportation etc likewise in case if you have if you if you know of any country which is also encouraging entrepreneurs i would like to uh, really read your comments in terms of how those countries are doing differently and encouraging the community of entrepreneurs and look forward to seeing your comments either on social media platforms or you can email us at the guiding voice for you at gmail.com also if you have any suggestions for some great speakers and inspiring entrepreneurs uh, pass the details on to us thank you so much in advance that's all for today and uh, guys thank you so much for joining me this is your host navin samala a fellow it professional and a passionate learner on a mission to make the difference in the lives and careers of millions across the globe until next time bye bye see you all in the next episode with another wonderful guest